Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. just got on site for a pretty big bio job this morning. It was an unattended death. The, the person who passed away was uh, laying on their bed for a few days, and so the body decomposed quite a bit. There's some blood and bio that goes straight down through the mattress into the subflooring. Today's a pretty big job. Um, it's probably gonna take about eight to 10 bio boxes, which is a pretty significant amount for an unattended death. Yeah, so the blood didn't go too deep in there. Uh, this surface level, which is good. You know, we don't have to cut out underneath it. That's definitely a plus. Less work for us, right? So as you can see, the bio, it came down through both mattresses. It leaked into this bed frame and it came through. If you look real closely, you can actually see some of the maggots. It uh, looks like some, some urine, bodily fluids, and then obviously the bio. Um, but you can see there's maggots growing, crawling all around. They're feeding off of this. If we waited longer, they would actually grow and get bigger. They feed off of this stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat everything, kill all of this, kill all the germs, bacteria, anything that's living, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll have to tear up the tile because the blood actually can get into this grout line and it gets underneath the tiling and it'll actually come, the smell will come back after a couple of days, weeks, or months if it stays under there. So we have to demo everything out, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll get it all sanitized and put it back together. So we just uh, finished up the job here. Uh, the very last thing that we're gonna do is ensure that there's no lasting odors, um, both from the decomp of the, the body, but also some of the other things, some cat urine and uh, things like that. So we're gonna run a UV machine. It's gonna run for 48 hours. Um, no humans, animals, or plants can be in the home. It takes the oxygen out of the air, so um, it's extremely dangerous. We put a warning on the front door, um, but we'll also be running an air scrubber to make sure that if there are any lasting um, you know, particles in the air, um, that'll get it, all of the air cleaned up. So by Monday, uh, 48 hours, this thing will be ran and all of the odor will be done and we'll be completely done with this job. So um, it was a great team effort. I think the client's gonna be pretty happy with the end result and uh, it was a good day's work. Hey guys, welcome to our newest decomp. Uh, we've got a large, large job upstairs here and it is an individual that was deceased for nine days, unfounded, undiscovered, and literally melted through the floor, coming through the gas pipe right here, leaking onto the uh, garage floor below. Look at him. Love that. Little maggot buffet. Yep. Right. Oh. I need another bag real quick. Okay. When I start, I don't stop. I'm gonna name this one John. Uh oh, little, little Bill over here. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, we are at the end of this uh, really big decomposition job. We uh, had to go from the top floor down to the bottom garage and go up. Uh, there was fluid that had leaked through the gas line. 
So we're finally finished now. Um, you know, we're relieved, but also nobody should die like that. So that's really super sad, but uh, there's absolutely no odor now. We've taken care of everything. So super pleased with the job. On to the next. Looks like it's been here for maybe a year, months at least. You know, it's been here for a very long time. And we're here to take it out. So we're going to actually get this whole room cleaned up to the point to where we can roll this carpet out, cut it out. Our job is going to be to take care of this and knock it out, get it out of here. Hopefully, you'll see a better difference in the end because it's definitely not going to be like this. We have a cat that I guess has died and been and on all over, flattened. But look, he's still got his whiskers and some teeth. Look at those. Yeah, look, he's still got fur. It didn't die too long ago. Yeah, so I was cleaning out the garage at this lady's house, and well, we found two cats that she said that was missing. Um, obviously, they didn't make it. Um, actually, they look like uh, they didn't really die that too long ago, because probably because of the heat and stuff, they mummify, but they have. Um, getting uh, roaches and other bugs or building houses. Like, look at this one. This one still has the hair. And look, it looked like it was meowing when it died. So it was probably in a lot of pain. But I found them squished under a bunch of stuff. Hey guys, we're finishing up here at the Cat Horde house. Um, we got this call through code enforcement. Uh, we had a call to remove all the carpets along with the uh, cat feces and urine and then after that we did disinfect the walls and the floors under where the carpets were um, In order to get to all of those items, of course, we had to throw out the hoard um, Initially, this took us just about two days to complete with four people and that's another job well done Hope to see you in the next video So right now, we're putting an absorbent down on the floor because we have some fresh, wet bodily fluid. So when we use the tile chipper and we start pulling this tile up, we don't want to spread it all over the house, right? So. As you can see, the discoloration of the grout, you can see where it went through, right? So here's your regular color. And here's that dark reddish brown color, right? So you can see where that body fluid did leak through. So we already know, hey, cool, that was the right call. I indicated, you know, it was sitting there. You can see it through the grout line. That I know now that I'm gonna treat the subfloor, right? So cool. Oh yeah. It's nice and fresh. Now I have a tattoo dentist. All right, so we have a sock that has a bunch of little baby Maggies on it. Don't forget to go to spaldingdecon.com and we have Maggie the Maggot plushies for sale so you can get one of these little guys for yourself. We, we arrived pretty early so we try to get to these bios as quick as possible. Um, so we got the phone we got the phone call for it. We, we, beat the, uh, we beat the medical examiner here in the corner here so we had to wait a while. Um, they, pulled, they pulled the guy out. Uh, we went in. We did our job. It's going to smell nice and pretty in there after, so it'll be good. So this is the bottom side of that mattress. This is that blue covering that's on this hospital mattress. It's kind of a special foam one. Um, so this is the bottom side. You can see where the like kind of the grills were. Um, I call it the grills. It's a stove or something or an oven. You can see the fat, and it's it's literally like a, a 
it looks like hair, kind of, because it's the mold spores. So that, that yellow is also that adipose, that fat, all that stuff, all that decomp that's on there, as well as the mold that's been growing because of the moisture in here and because it's been allowed to continue to decompose with, um, with exposure to moisture, right? So. Nathan here at the end of another successful bio for Spalding Decon. So, again, as from the beginning of the video, here's where the initial scene was, right? So, the gentleman had passed away on that bed and had leaked onto the floor, had gotten underneath the subfloor at for the entire area, as you can see right here, where we ended up pulling this flooring. Um, just to reiterate, the windows were left open by the coroners or the police department. When they come, it smells real bad for a decomp. When they find the body, they would pull it out. They ripped the windows open, you know, let it air out a little bit, and they never shut them. So it's been over a month now since the body was removed, and the man, the gentleman was there for two weeks before they found him, right? So it's been a long time for decomp. Well, since the window was open and moisture was introduced, there was a lot of mold. You can see mold evident all over the place in here. So the bio itself, the actual bodily fluids, the fat, the blood, the all the nasty, good, goopy stuff that we love in and enjoy here on these jobs was really moldy. So the blood was moldy, everything. So as you can see um, from the beginning, um, just kind of where it was. So it had grown mold spores and stuff, so we kind of had to fight the mold spores a little bit, leave the window open, um, kind of to help mitigate and take the proper measures because those mold spores were introduced into the air, so. We are here in South Tampa at an unattended death. Um, this body was uh, here for what we think is about three, four days. That's all blood? It's all blood. Yeah, pretty much blood. There it is. Oh. Big money, man. So here we got the big patch of blood that went under the rug. Fresh blood. Fresh blood? You'll see it. They had on the heat instead of the fan, and I just and I just changed it. I just dropped the temperature down because it was so hot in here. That's why that's why you can smell it from all the way outside. Like holy crap! Oh, what are you uh, spraying um, on the decomp, guys? Obviously, we know where most of the bio is, but I'm spraying indicator to see where it ran and where any bodily fluids had permeated anything else in the residence. Hey, so here we have Maggie, Maggie the maggot, running across the floor. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> With the chair, I just cut the fabric out around the chair, and as you can see, you have the blood staining from the bio running all the way around the chair, which now all of the fabric will have to be removed at least another possibly two feet down to see how far the bio traveled. And whatever else is left up under it, how he just removed the wood framing, it'll probably have to be the same thing as well. What it is, nice boy. Right exactly there. what it is. Definitely seems like it's gonna fall. But he glued him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. He glued him down. <laughs> yeah, he oh glued. shit! He, it's he, alright. It's alright. It'll just go and bite. He glued everything to the thing so it wouldn't move. It'll just yeah. go and bite if it don't. Uh, <laughs> the whole table moved before I even moved this damn thing. Come on. Yeah, you oh. Damn, he put glue on that. Back out over there, boy. That was something. I don't think she wants them Chinese artifacts no more. She <laughs> want more. Woo! So here we are guys, we're finished here at the bio decomp. Um, we got all the, the flooring removed, got it all painted, covered, encapsulated so that the bio smell doesn't seep out into the house anymore. Um, we set up our ozone machine so that we can kill and disinfect the smell of the bio inside of the house. All of the contents that the homeowner wanted, the homeowner's daughter wanted removed, we took it all with us, bagged it, trashed it put it on the back of the box truck. Like I said, our ozone set, it's working its system, working its magic. It'll sit for 48 hours so that the smell can dissipate onto the next job. All right, guys. So the job changed a little bit, right? So as we're going through, as we start moving things off to clear it, 
to move the furniture out to get the biohazard off, we noticed uh, some cocaine and residue, right? So that is a point of concern because we do not know what the cause of death is. It could be a fentanyl overdose. With the amount of the, the amount of blood that's here, things like certain things just kind of add up, right? So we're gonna treat this as if it was fentanyl. All right, what's up, guys? So a little point of interest here. If you if you saw earlier, there was a big spot of, of blood. A lot of the other spots were the you know the seepage and the leakage of fluid during the decomposition process, whether that be you know bile, plasma, a little blood mixed in. That spot specifically, right, kind of where his head had slumped, was you can see indicative of the stain um, on the chair was was majority right here. So whatever the cause of death was, there was a good amount of blood that came out because it hit with enough force and dripped with enough force to splatter all right here repeatedly. So it's hitting and just kicking this up and you're now having this big splatter mark right here. So makes you wonder. As you can see, there's baby, baby maggots, little tiny ones of eggs and baby maggots that never got to grow up and the special big little maggots. What is up guys? End of this bio today. We got it done pretty good. Um, came in, it's an, it was a, like I said, it was an unattended death in a chair. Guy had leaked pretty far. Uh, we found it, once we started pulling things out, found it uh, way, ran under his bed, all the way to the farthest baseboard, all the way across the room. We had to pull uh, the LVT, the stick down flooring, and then underneath that was an old layer of stick down flooring that it leaked through as well to get to the subfloor. We had to we had to surface treat and get through all of those and then get to the bottom. Uh, then we sealed it up, we fogged, we dropped our ozone machine for that smell mitigation. Um, during the process, you know, we found a little bit of drugs. So we had to take secondary precautions because we don't know what it is. You know, we know it's cocaine. We don't know if the guy died of an overdose from a uh, for fentanyl or whatever so we want to take that precaution for for the safety of the team and, and all the technicians so we did that we got it done uh, it's another great day I say probably you know there's one right there hey guys so as you can see here we have what appears to be back or stomach skin from this decomp so you get to enjoy this moment with me as we peel it from the from the floor it's almost like peeling a sunburn, I guess would be the closest I can say. It comes right up like, yeah, you can hear it too, it's coming right off that carpet. It feels like paper, it's been dry, not too wet anymore. Yeah, there it is. There's some hair on it. This part's still wet over here. Look. There it is, stuck to my finger. So any type of uh, biohazardous material, bodily fluid, any type of waste that comes from the human body has to be disposed of properly, legally and ethically too. You don't want to just throw this in a trash can for somebody to find, you know, it's kind of kind of gross. So we, we always, always follow our proper procedures of removing and transporting and everything when it comes to biohazard like that. All right, so we're gonna try to attempt to make it a little bit easier since it is hardened and stuck to the floor. I'm gonna get it wet and we're gonna we're gonna get it off that way. So it might just kind of scoop off now a little easier. Once it gets wet. Yeah, look at that. So you can see the difference. I need a scraper. It's kind of souping now, as you can see. It's getting wet and it's clumping together. Yeah, so the part A is causing it to bubble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get a little taco scoop. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. hairs in there. <laughs> that was awesome. You want me to just swap you out with another one? Or? How horrible to be laying in bed, not able to get out for seven days while your husband is dead in the next room and no one can help you and no one can find you for seven days and the bird starts eating on her husband.
So, I mean, I can't imagine what's going through her head for seven damn days with no food or water. That's horrible, absolutely horrible. Hey guys, end of day one here at the unattended death slash horde job. Dream team was on it, Laura, Nathan, myself, getting this done. We got all the bio cleared out for today. Um, we're wrapping, wrapping it up, but we have multiple days of a hoarding clean out still left to do. So make sure you tune in for day two. Oh, man, roll that back up. Oh! <coughs> get it. Uh -oh. You're gonna have a... Get, get the bag under there. I'm trying to Come on. Come on, now. Oh. Uh, I'm Melody. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, from Indianapolis, and I'm right. here helping on a bio cleanup right now um, for our training. Mm. Doing them down there, but they are going at something. Look at little fellas. And you're going to be opening a franchise up in Indianapolis too, right? Yeah, yeah. First, first thing of the year, that's what we're doing. Starting off with bang. Oh, they're going towards the bio. Yeah, well. Oh man, where'd you find those at? Right there in the sink. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. So overall, this was a really, really difficult job uh, for several reasons. One, the smell was absolutely horrendous. So thank God for respirators, right? Yeah. And uh, this was perfect training for for franchisees and it was very hot and we're in very small quarters. I don't think this apartment is more than 600 square feet. So uh, super glad to be done with it and uh, hopefully another person will move in and not know what happened before uh, they moved in. So that'd yeah. be great, right? Yep. To the next one. So if you come and take a look here, when we went into the condo, the police actually took this chain off of one of the bodies and they said it was sitting in fentanyl. But there's also a piece of bio hanging from it. There was also money on the table. I'll hold on to this for a second. A couple of $20 bills. Typically in drug overdoses, we do see money. Um, a lot of times they use them as straws, they'll roll, roll them up, use it to snort or intake this. This actually just looks like they had got back. Um, we were told that they were, that Saturday night they, they did register coming in the gate late at night. This looks like maybe they just emptied their pockets onto the table. Um, not so much as they were trying to use these as tools to, to uh, ingest their drugs but it does have bio on it it's indicating here and you can see and that might just be from them tossing this right onto the the, mon the money when they put it right here as you see this is indicating as well so now we have to treat that as bio that may be because the police threw this onto the couch to try to get it up while they're doing their investigation and trying to get to the body so what i'm doing right now is i'm going to do a surface clean of this and then I'm gonna sit it into our viral disinfectant so that I can we can inventory it give it to the property here in case the, the victim's family wants it. I'm gonna sacrifice my glove for you guys and go outside and change it but look All right guys, we wrapped up day two of the unattended death fentanyl decontamination. It was a, a quick one. We had a power team with Nathan and I getting through it real quick. Hope you enjoy the video. And remember, we will put some fentanyl facts at the end of this video so that you understand the dangers of fentanyl. Thank you. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.